Hello and welcome to this training DVD for the hot glass vacuum press. We're here today to show you some of the features, the, the control panels, the setup of the machine, the safety features of it and actually how to use the machine and process your work through here. Um, the machine that we're using today is the HGP260, but this DVD is relevant for all uh, machines that we manufacture and previous dated machines. This is the up most up-to-date model. Some of the features on here might be slightly different to um, a machine that you might have on site that may be a couple of years old, uh, but please refer to the instruction manuals for uh, some of the control panels if they do differ. You'll notice that we've got the machine set up. Um, it's already put onto its stand. Um, we have, uh, the ins there is instructions within the box of the, of the stand how to set this up and how to locate the machine onto it. You'll notice that we've actually bolted it down, bolted the machine down onto the stand. So if we lift the, the machine up, you'll notice that the stand comes with it. That's a safety feature and must be done. Uh, you must bolt it down to the stand and secure it tightly. Um, also, just for the purposes of this video, uh, we've got it at a slight angle against the wall. Most people will have it set back against the wall with a workbench alongside it, approximately the same size as, as the actual vacuum press itself, um, so that when you're processing work, it goes straight from the bench straight into the machine. Um, we're going to talk to you about uh, some of the control panels, the control panels at the front, some of the, um, uh, the other safety features in the, uh, uh, on the machine. Um, we'll start at the front of the machine. You'll notice that either side of the machine that we've got two latches. This is actually to secure the lid of the press down. Okay, and they're very easy to do. Um, starting from uh, the centre of the machine working towards me, uh, we have here the temperature controller. Okay, um, then we have the power on and off button, the timer, the pump uh, switch, um, a vacuum gauge and a pressure adjustment gauge. Okay, the main, obviously the main switch is the main power on off switch, so we've actually plugged it into the wall, um, uh, plug straight socket in. Again, different machines require different power requirements, so again, please check to our, um, either our catalogue or our, the instruction manual for the power consumption for each machine. This 260 is just straight plug and play. So we've, we've plugged it in, we've switched it on. You'll notice that also we've actually already got this to temperature again for this training video. Um, Again, depending on the size of the machine, will take different different times to get to the uh, the set temperature. The machine is actually set in the factory at 90 degrees centigrade, um, and it will fluctuate because it's thermostatically controlled. It will fluctuate around from anywhere from about 80, 86, 87 up to about 93, and it cuts itself in and out and just regulates its own temperature. To set the temperature, what we do is we press the set button, and then we can go up and down using the up and down arrows. Okay, release the set, temp the set button and that goes back to the temperature that the machine is currently at. Okay, for, for the 260, to get to 90 degrees takes around about 15 minutes. Now, the, next, uh, the next dial that we have here is the timer control. The timer control is used in conjunction with the pump switch. Okay, now we've got the, we've got the latches down. Um, if we just switch it onto manual, you'll hear a pump switch itself on. Okay, that pump will continuously run, it will extract all the air from, from inside the press. This should take around about 15 seconds for this size of machine. Again, other sizes of machine may vary. Um, and this, the pump will be switched on constantly. It never changes um, until the point where you come and switch it back onto automatic. Um, and you'll notice then as well, when I switch it onto manual, you'll notice that the actual vacuum dial comes round and we're aiming for around about 28 um, on the gauge, uh, which is giving us pretty much full pressure. Okay, back onto automatic. Automatic mode then includes the timer. So what we have here, when we have it on the t uh, on the automatic mode, we can actually we've got it set here for for two minutes. We press the start button. What will happen is again it will pull vacuum. Again, takes about 15 seconds to pull vacuum. Um, you'll notice that the timer is starting to count down. Once it comes to the end of the cycle. I just stop it there. It'll actually allow air back into the machine, so you'll notice that the vacuum gauge drops off. It'll also reset the timer to the preset time um, that you've had it set for. To, to actually set the timer, what we do is we press the program set button, okay, and we've got the seconds that start flashing, so you can actually go up and down on the seconds. If we press the H and M button, the minutes start to flash, and again, you'll notice that we can go up and down on the minutes, okay. 
press set again, and that's already preset in there. So, automatic mode, you can use the timer. Manual mode, the pump will just continuously run. Then we come onto the pressure adjustment gauge. Um, again, if we turn the pump back onto manual, you'll notice that it'll come to pressure. It's maybe been a little bit quicker this time because I've not opened up the lid and allowed too much air back into it. So it's only taken a few seconds to get to vacuum, but um, normally, as I say, it'll take about 15 seconds. Um, then we have the pressure adjustment. You'll notice here, you've got the pressure adjustment, uh, the, the vacuum gauge on around about 28. If we unwind the pressure adjuster, you'll notice that gauge dropping down so there's less actual pressure within the press. And you'll also hear that the actual pump makes a little bit noisier sound. Um, the, the, the idea for the pressure adjustment gauge is if you're using something like a foam core, foam centered board, which can easily, easily damage on the edges. Um, some people like to back the pressure off, but there is a slightly better way of doing things and we'll show you that later on in the DVD. So we have here on the side of the machine uh, three little fuses. You'll notice that a pump 5 amp, a temperature 1 amp, and a timer 1 amp. What we have, if we just undo one of these, take it out, you'll notice that there's a, um, a, little, a little small glass fuse that you'll buy from any hardware store. Um, that, the, the pump one, if you come in one day and the pump suddenly st uh, stops working, the first thing to check would be the pump fuse just to make sure that, um, that it's all working. Uh, also, with the temperature and the timer controller on the front of the machine, if either of, if either of them go out, if both of them go out, it's something going to be different, which we'll show you in a second. But if either of them go out, it's likely to be either the temperature controller, the temperature fuse or the timer fuse. So have a look at those and get those changed. So we've spoken about the fuses. We'll move towards the back of the machine. We'll talk about the vacuum pump. I'm just going to pop a piece of card just on top of the lid of the press. You'll notice that this is the vacuum pump. Uh, it has four suction feet on the bottom of it, and I don't want it to stick to the, to the lid of the press. I'm just going to unplug it and show you how it's supplied. It comes in its own separate box, so you'll notice that that's the machine, that's the pump itself. So you'll take it out of its box. Um, on here, there's a little um, kettle type plug. Okay, so that gets plugged into the back of the machine. There is only one place for it to plug into, so we just lock that in. The pump also gets supplied with a length of red hose. And you'll notice that if I push it into the pump itself, it will actually lock in. To disconnect it, what you have to do, you have to press and hold the blue collar and then pull the pipe out. So pushing it in actually locks it in place. And the same again for the other end that pumps into, plugs into the machine. At the back of the machine, there is only again one place that it'll plug into, exactly the same fit in here on the back of the machine. So sticking with the vacuum pump, you'll notice that uh, on here there's a moisture trap uh, which is uh, to collect water. Um, within, the pump, within the press itself, it's working at 90 degrees centigrade. Various substrates will um, give off moisture. The, if it's cardstock, that sort of product, uh, it contains water. And at 90 degrees centigrade, it will give off moisture. So the steam will work its way through the pipework um, via going out through the pump. What we don't want to do is to allow any of the moisture to get into the pump and let it rust. So what we have here is a, a built-in moisture trap. It's a little uh, plastic jar that uh, sits in line with the pump and the, uh, the pipework. Um, if this does fill up with water to about halfway, all we do is we'll unscrew it. You actually unscrew it clockwise, take that out, pour the water away, pop that back in, and then screw it back in into place anti-clockwise, making sure that it's locked in firmly. Okay, so that's the pump, all working properly. That can go back down onto the floor. Okay, while we're still at the back of the machine, what we want to talk to you here is about two circuit breakers that are in here. You'll notice that um, on the larger, uh, the larger of the two, the one closer to the centre of the press, this one actually is there to protect you. So if you do get any short circuits or the machine shorts out, then this one will actually uh, trip out um, and do no harm to the operator. If you do get any power surges that are coming through, if it's a power spike or something like that from the electricity supply, rather than damaging the machine, this will actually trip out so it protects the machine. So the large one protects you as the user, the smaller one protects uh, the actual machine. You'll notice that they're both pointing towards the center of the press. Um, when they are actually um, being used, they have to be pointing towards the center of the press. That's the on position. You'll notice that if I turn one of those off, one of them, uh, the, both of the lights at the front of the machine will switch itself off. Um, if I turn that back on, they'll both come back on. So if you turn the machine on in the morning, 
uh, put the main power on off switch and you've got it plugged in at the wall with a plug uh, with a wall plug socket on uh, and neither of the lights turn on at the front then just double check that these two switches are actually uh, working and they're pointing towards the center of the press